Hey there, folks. Another day, another drop test, but this time with the Shadow 2. So I saw a lot of interesting discussion with um, coming out of the, the drop test with the Staccato video, what modifications people would like to see tested, what what should be drop safe, what should not be drop safe, all this kind of stuff. I thought it was, you know, it was a good discussion. It's pretty interesting. But a lot of the discussion centered around the Shadow 2. Now, this is a very common gun to shoot in USPSA. I think it's a pretty good gun. I own many of them. I fundamentally like the gun. I enjoy shooting the gun. It's a, an example of a pretty good double single gun, especially for competition shooting. Like, it's, you know, it's pretty good. Uh, however, the, the one death I'm aware of in USPSA involving a dropped firearm was with a Shadow 2. Now... I don't know the specifics of that gun, like what all was going on with there, but a lot of the discussion was like, hey, this gun's been modified, blah, 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 it's different. So to bring you up to speed, um, obviously there's a firing pin in this gun with a firing pin spring. The spring pushes the firing pin back, back out so the hammer can hit it. So in a sense, the firing pin spring offers resistance to the firing pin as it goes forward to smack the primer. So a lot of people lighten the firing pin spring in these guns. Why, why do they do that? Well, un under this cap, there's a hammer spring and that, that spring, you know, makes the hammer go forward. If I have a lighter hammer spring, then I have a lighter double action trigger pull and I guess slightly lighter single action pull. But in any event, that's why people do this kind of stuff. They also install Extended firing pins on occasion. Now, what I've been reading in the comments, and I don't have a big reason to doubt this, like this makes sense to me. It's like, hey, you start ex installing the extended firing pin, you start monking around with the firing pin spring, the, the shadows become not drop safe in a big hurry. So I took the one shadow I have, this one, the special edition Maria Gushina gun. This is number 245 out of 500, by the way. Very special gun. I like the gun. Uh, I took this and drop tested it uh, just because it's the only shadow I have that I know for sure no one has messed with. Like nobody changed the the springs or whatever in this. So this is the, for sure a factory example. And also added bonus, I thought it'd be super annoying if people saw me take this expensive pistol and uh, drop it on the cement in my garage. So that, I mean, it all, it just made it better. So anyway, I did do a drop test on this. I put it up on Instagram, and I also did several uh, several repetitions of the test. What I found, um, I can get this thing to pop a fire uh, to pop a primer if I drop it multiple times, like directly. It has to hit like directly on the muzzle. I did maybe ten or twelve drops of this pistol today. Um, I couldn't get it to pop a primer like in one go, like in one drop. It took at least two to get it to go. Uh, so I took, you know, I took the test results, put it up on Instagram, and there it is. Um, people can discuss it. The takeaway from this, not a whole lot for me. I don't really view this as a lot different than a 2011, I guess. Like if you set the gun up a certain way, it's not drop safe. If you set it up a different way, it, it is drop safe, I guess. It's more drop safe. Um, and then the, you know, the way that you set it up or the way that you want to buy it, I guess, is going to determine how drop safe it is going to be. Uh, the only other thing I'm thinking about looking at this gun, like I could use another shadow with an optic on it because nobody really shoots irons anymore. It's all about the optic. I'm tempted to mill this gun for an optic just to be really annoying. So put it down in the comments if you'd like to see me do that. Could use a special edition gun as my optics gun. That'd be great.